Discrete mathematics is my favourite type of mathematics. Why? Well, it deals with puzzles mainly, and very simple but yet complicated mechanisms, and I like that sort of thing. A lot better than calculus, which deals with a lot of crazy, over-the-top maths. I mean, no offence to calculus, still love you, but discrete maths is where my heart lies. So, what is discrete maths? Why is it different than normal maths? Well, it's because of the type of values that it deals with. In calculus, you'll be used to dealing with continuous data, so these like swooping graphs where the graph can take any value on either the y or the x. And this applies to things like heights. You can't be... well, you can be any height within a reasonable range, it's not like you're limited to either being one foot, two foot, or three foot. And the same with the weight, you can be any reasonable weight, unless you're morbidly obese, between a certain range of values. But discrete maths deals with set values, things which are usually just whole numbers. So they they deal with things in real life like, let's say, the number of children in a class. So the number of children. Because you can't have half of a child, you can only just have either three or four or five kids. Uh, same with letters in a word. So letters in words. You can't have half of a letter in a word. So this discrete mathematics deals with these set whole number values of maths. And this is particularly useful now living in the 21st century because it applies to computers. Computers deal in discrete mathematics. Although it sometimes seems like they deal in continuous maths, like looking at this curve on your monitor right now, this isn't actually a curve, it's made up of tiny pixels, discrete values. But because that, that v these discrete values are so smooth, it looks like a smooth curve. And all these high advanced computers can perform continuous mathematics because they've performed discrete mathematics so accurately and so precisely. So why do computers only use discrete maths? Well, binary. Binary is the way computers work. Uh, you don't really need to know this, but it's just on or off values. And that means that computers can only hold a finite number of data. These bits, as we call them, can only be a certain length. A computer can only hold a certain amount of them. So this idea of working with computers in discrete mathematics is particularly useful because of the idea of a process. A computer can't just spontaneously do things. It needs to have a set of instructions to follow, and we call these algorithms. What are algorithms? Well, you probably already know a few. An algorithm is something like when you order something from Ikea and you don't have a clue how to build it, you follow the instructions. That's probably a bad example because the stuff from Ikea usually falls apart, but whatever. Algorithms are just sets of instructions that you can follow to produce the exact same result. So you don't need to understand the process or just intuitively know the process, you can follow an algorithm. And that you already can apply in maths. For example, you probably know the algorithm about finding the median. Let's just rub this out here. So when it comes to finding the median, which is the middle of a set of numbers, if you have something like 1, 2, 4, 5, 9, the median of a set value of numbers is the one in the middle. But the algorithm that you learn for following this is first you need to strike off the last two numbers, and then your new list is just composed of the remaining numbers, and then you strike off the next last num first and last numbers, and then the one that you're left with is your median. If there's two numbers, you find the mean. So we can write this down as a set of instructions. We can say, order the list, and then we can say, strike, strike off first and last, and then we can say repeat until 
only one or two numbers remain and then find the mean and that's your algorithm you can apply this to any list of numbers and reliably find the, the median so the thing with algorithms is yes you can give them to people who don't understand the process or can't understand the process like a computer a computer isn't capable of that kind of thought but as a human you can understand these algorithms and that means that you can apply them or you can modify these algorithms to apply them to very special situations for example you can intuitively know that if i give you a list that composes of three 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 and this list is 2000 numbers long and they're all threes finding the median you wouldn't need to follow this list this list would take a very long time to do and you can know that okay what you're doing in this algorithm is essentially finding the middle value and you know that the middle value in this case is going to be three because they're all threes and the median if there were two numbers left is going to be three because three plus three divided by two is going to be three so when you do these algorithms in discrete maths it really does help to understand the algorithm and that's what i'm going to be primarily helping you with and the first algorithm that we're going to look with look at sorry is something that is quite simple but the algorithm for it is a very set thing so we're going to look at sorting algorithms we're only going to look at one in this video but we'll look at some more later so what is a sorting algorithm well if you have a set of data if you're a computer and you have a set of data that that is only useful if you can quickly find the information that you want so that's why in a phone book you have the alphabetical order so that you can easily find the name that you're looking for and then the number so there are a bunch of algorithms designed to be used on computers to uh, add subtract delete or order numbers and that's what we're going to be looking at specifically ordering numerical lists in increasing or decreasing order so how would we do that let's imagine we have the numbers one to five in a random order so we'd have the numbers one three five four and two this is a scrambled number and we need to put these in order so let's think about how we can do it as a computer we can't just look at this whole list and then rearrange it into order like anybody with the knowledge of how to count to five could do because we're a computer we can't do that but what we can do is compare two numbers if we compare the two numbers and then see which one's bigger which we can do by looking at the size of the data value we could rearrange the numbers as necessary so we could compare the numbers and swap the numbers so applying that concept could we find a way to order the list of numbers let's just start by comparing one and three well seeing as we want this list in increasing order so we want one at the top and five at the bottom if we compare two numbers and the second number is smaller than the first number that means that that tiny list of two numbers isn't in decreasing order so if we look at them and then see that they're out of that order and then swap them it's going to be in that order it's going to be closer to being in decreasing in increasing order sorry so in this case these numbers don't need to be swapped so then let's compare the next two numbers let's get a different color so it's easier let's compare three and five again looking at the size of these numbers five is bigger than three so these numbers don't need to be swapped but then looking at five and four five is bigger than four so it is out of the order of the list so we can swap these numbers around and make a new list one three four five and two because we swapped this four and this five around and this list is now much closer to being 
in that order. So let's look at the last two numbers here. And 5 is going to be bigger than 2, so we'd swap that. And we'd end up with a list of 1, 3, 4, 2, and 5. Now this isn't our complete list. We'd need to do this whole process again. But we've done something good here. We've ordered the list slightly more than it was. And doing this process has a name. And it is called the bubble sort. It is called the bubble sort because small numbers tend to rise to the top like uh, bubbles in a fizzy drink. I like to call it something different. I like to call it the stone sort, but that's not the official name for it, and you'll see why I call it that later. But we can take this process that we've done and fit it into an algorithm. We can write it in terms of an algorithm. So we could say compare first, second numbers. Sorry, my notation is going to be a little dodgy here, but I don't have time to write it all out and I'm very lazy. So compare the first and second numbers and then swap if first is bigger. And then as we did we move on to the next one. So compare second and third number numbers, sorry. And then again swap if the sec yeah, second sorry, let me rub that out. Start that bit again. The second is bigger. So we're trying to take the big numbers and stick them near the bottom of the list. And then we could say repeat. So we do that many times until we end up with this last list. But seeing as this isn't in order, we'd need to do it again. And that concept of doing it multiple times is called making multiple passes. So this would be the first pass. And the f using that concept of passes and comparisons and swaps is really useful because we can compare different algorithms. Doing it this way is not the only way to sort numbers. So taking into account when we order a, a list the number of passes, comparisons and swaps, we can look at multiple methods of doing it and compare them all. So let's look at this here. We've made... No, let's... Let's just go on and do a proper a proper one so that we can so we can f fully do this. So let's make this five, one, two, six, nine, four, and three. We can call this our original list. And then we can perform our algorithm that we wrote. So the first step in the algorithm was to compare the first and second numbers and swap them if the first one is bigger than the second and in this case it is. So we're going to represent these numbers being swapped and this is how I do that. Let's draw the arrows and switch them around and then write out our new list. So 1, 5, 2, 6, 9, 4 and 3. Writing out this whole list again would not really be necessary if we were doing this on a computer or something, we just shuffle the values around, but doing it like this allows you to see how the list physically changes, and we can keep account of our comparisons and swaps easier. So then the second step of our algorithm says compare the second and the third numbers. And again the second number is bigger than the third, and we want to get this list into increasing order, so let's swap them around. And our new list is going to look like this. And as the algorithm continues, these numbers don't need to be swapped. This may look boring, and trust me it is. Doing the, on the exams, I like to give you these huge lists of numbers and say, do every step. It is very boring, but it's, it's quite therapeutic eventually. You just kind of get used to it. So we continue doing the algorithm here. Swapping these numbers around. If 
necessary to try and get the list slightly in order. So six, nine, make a mistake there, four, three. And now nine is bigger than four, so we need to swap it. So what color is that? There we go. One, two, five, six, four, nine, three. And then compare the last two numbers here. Yep, these need to be swapped. One, two, five, six, four, three, nine. Now we've reached the bottom of our list. This is the first pass that we've done. So we can write out in simple notation, keeping count of the, com the comparisons and the swaps. So on our first pass, let's see how many comparisons we made. We made one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then see how many swaps we've made. Well, we made one here, second one here. We didn't make them here, but we made a third one here and a fourth one here. So we made four swaps. Why did I write that in green? I don't know. Four swaps. So this raises a question. How can we tell when this is over? Obviously, it's not over now, and we can see that because this list isn't in order. But a computer can't just do that. Otherwise, this whole process would be a lot easier. But when we've made these swaps that means that the list has been out of order so if we ran through a list and we didn't make any swaps then we could safely say that the algorithm is over so one way to do it is to continue going on until we eventually reach zero swaps and then we stop the algorithm but that's quite arduous that means that every single time we do a pass we're going to need to compare six times and we're going to need to keep swapping them but comparing it six times is very inefficient. If the longer the list is, the longer that's going to take. It would be much better if we could have another quicker method of seeing whether this is done. And the key is this number here, the biggest number in the list. As soon as we started comparing this number with the one below it, we've swapped every single time. And that's why I like to call it the stone method. The biggest number starts sinking to the bottom. And looking at this algorithm, we can work out that that's what's going to happen. As soon as we hit the biggest number, every single time that we're going to compare it, it is going to be bigger, so it is going to get swapped. So it's going to get swapped down to the bottom of the list. And the same thing happens here. Our 5, our biggest number in the list, gets swapped every single time until it hits the bottom. So, knowing that, we could take... So let's just write in that this is our new list. We could take our new list once we've finished with a single pass, and we could say that knowing that the bottom number is now going to be our biggest number, we don't even need to check it, because we just know logically that that's what's going to happen. We can rule off the bottom number. We can cement its position in the list as a final place. And that means that the next time we do a pass, we won't need to compare these six times. We'd only need to do it five, because we'd stop as soon as we get to here. We know that nothing is in the list is ever going to be bigger than this bottom number, so we don't need to compare it with anything. And that also means that as soon as we have ruled off every single number up to the top, we can say our algorithm is finished. So that is the basic concept of the bubble sort. You continue doing the passes and ruling off the numbers until we get to the top and then we stop the algorithm. We can write this officially. The official words of the algorithm are step one. If there is only one number, stop. This ensures that as soon as we've got to the top, we stop. We don't need to mindlessly compare all of the numbers again. Step two. Make one pass down the list. Comparing numbers. Scroll down a bit there, sorry. Comparing numbers and swapping if necessary scrolling again 
hens in a weird position if necessary and then step three our final step is if no swaps have been made stop otherwise ignore the last number uh, ignore the last number and then return to step one this is our officially worded algorithm so the official algorithm really combines those two properties we talked about if no swaps have been made then we can say that it's complete so we don't need to stop no so we don't need to carry on we can just stop and we keep doing this cycle until there is only one number remaining now if this is clear for you great really good but if it isn't stick around I'm gonna do a complete sort which I'm probably gonna regret because it takes forever but needs to be done so you can watch me do a whole one if you want if not thank you for watching but now I'm going to sort a complete list of numbers so let's continue doing the numbers that we did up here so we'll copy this first pass no we'll just copy the results of this first pass so we know that in the first pass we made six comparisons and four swaps and we ended up with this list let me just copy this list so I don't have to keep remembering them so copy paste and then we can tidy this up a bit use a bigger brush size preferably not that big there we go so there's our new list and we have ruled off the bottom number so now we can make our second pass we compare the first two numbers we don't need to swap those so we do one two five six four three I'm not going to write in the bottom number just assume that it's there so then we swap these two these don't need to be swapped one two five six four three these two don't need to be swapped one two five six four three these two however first number is bigger than the second number so we swap these one two five four six three and then we compare the last two we need to swap these one two five four six three not six three three six now the last step of our algorithm is to rule off the bottom number and then start the list again but first let's take account of how many comparisons and swaps we've made we've made one two three four five comparisons so one less than we did last time and we have swapped twice so then let's get rid of our old list Oops. clear move our new list over and then do another pass so it's our third pass now if we compare these two numbers don't need to swap one two five four three compare these two don't need to swap one two five four three you begin to see what I meant by how therapeutic this is you can just kind of get into the swing of things these two do need to be swapped one two four five three and it's a good idea to do a lot of these I mean I know it's not exactly the most fun activity in the world 
but it means that you can really start flying through them and you don't want to be sitting around in your exam waiting 20 minutes to try and sort a list of 30 numbers into order. I'm just kidding, they don't give you 30 numbers but I wouldn't be surprised if they did, let's put it that way. So 4, 3, 5. Then we can rule off the bottom number and take account of the comparisons and swaps we made. Four comparisons, I'm beginning to see a trend here. We are going down one comparison every single pass and two swaps. There is no trend in these swaps. It's purely based off how randomly arranged the group was in the first place. So let's clear that. Move this over. We're going to keep it there so that we don't need to keep rearranging the numbers. Okay, so let's do our fourth pass. Compare first two numbers. Don't need to swap. One, two, four, three. Compare second two, then need to swap. So one, two, three, four. It is very easy to. Oh god! See, it's very easy to make mistakes in this. So it is worth checking over everything you've done as soon as you finish doing things. So let's compare the last two. Swap them. One, two, three, four. Now, what's happened here is we have finished sorting our list. We can tell that, but a computer can't. So we need to, again, cut off the last number and continue on with the algorithm, even though we have finished sorting the numbers. So let's make, take account of our comparisons and swaps. We know that we're going to have three comparisons following this trend, but we only have one swap this time. So... Let's again re rearrange this. Clear. Move this over. And then this is going to be our fifth pass. We compare these. We don't need to swap. One, two, three. And we compare these. And we don't need to swap. And that's the end of our algorithm. Because we have made no swaps, as the algorithm up here says, we have made no swaps, we can stop the algorithm, because we know that the list must be in order. Let's just count up our final pass, we have made two comparisons and zero swaps, and that's why we finish. So then we can summarise the complete use of this algorithm, so we can clear that, we can stick the algorithm into a single list, if you will, that will kind of allow us to see the progress of the algorithm. So if we have our original, first, second, that's the, not second, second, third, fourth, and ultimately fifth pass, we can write down the numbers as they appeared. So first we had a five, one, two, six, nine, four, three, and then that changed to one, two, Five, six, four, three, nine, and then that check, and we ruled off at this point that number, and then it's one, two, five, six, three, nope, one, two, four, three, six. 9 and we ruled off this number and then it was 1, 2, 4, 3, 5, 6, 9 and we ruled off this number and then 1, why am I suddenly writing in grey? Technical difficulties 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9 and we ruled off this number and then on our fifth pass one two three four five 
six, nine. Then we finished our algorithm there, and that's how it progressed. You can see that it ultimately went from the shuffled list to the sorted list. Now you can do this yourself, make up a num list of random numbers, and try and sort it. In the next video, we're going to cover another method of sorting these numbers into order using the same concept of comparing and swapping, but using a slightly more efficient way. I mean, we can't say for sure that it's more efficient because it depends on a number of factors, and you'll often be asked to compare two methods of the algorithm by using these number of comparisons and swaps and adding up the total number of comparisons. In this case, the total number was 20 comparisons and we swapped nine times. So you use these totals of comparisons and swaps to evaluate the two algorithms. And we'll do a bit of that in the next one. So I will see you then.